athletes and bodybuilding fans around the world, welcome to another Primetime Muscle. I'm Tim Wilkins. Hope your uh, cardio is off to a good start. Kick it up a couple notches as we introduce these two great guys. Real deal, Chris Cormier. How you guys doing? Real deal in the house. Good to be here. The good MIB. Here. The good MIB. To be here. Good to be here. And Super Judge Tarek El Gindi. Hello, my I, friend. I, I actually love the, the black. Um, it, it wears really nice. Um, I like the silver with the Cartier. The yes. Blue de balloon Cartier, very nice Come in, get time it piece. Bring it in, bring he's, it in. He's got the resistance. Bring it in. The bring resistance. Ah, ah, ah. Show the resistance uh, chain hitting the the table, making Nico go crazy. But I want to say like something that. that you mentioned. <laughs> By the way, that you look so I freaking like, fly look right at this. now. Look Thank at you, this. fellas. I mean, you look like a the 70s Trojans. reporter from CBS. No, that's the old school Redskins. Yeah. You know, what I mean? look. You know, you know what this is? Uh, when you're in um, uh, prep and you're at the last bit and there's only two jackets that fit, mm -hmm. yeah. this is one that apparently I wore uh, in the 185 to 190 range. Okay. All right. It looks good, though. Thanks, it guys. It looks very nice. Now, Tim Wilkins, I would like to mentioned something that you have mentioned. You said as you do your cardio. A lot of our um, audience that watches Primetime Muscle, they're usually doing their cardio. Yes. Which is something that Chris and I, be picking it up Chris and right I have not done in 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so all power to you right doing your cardio there. Change your gear. Do Change it for gear. us. Do Change it your for gear us. right now. Yeah. Change your gear right now. Right well, now. Uh, we are actually today talking some more about uh, open <laughs> bodybuilding. And uh, we've talked a bit about Samson Dowda who uh, made a big uh, showing last year, the Olympia. Uh, it was a three-man call-out, and I love that, that big Steve Weinberger, when it came down to those last couple guys, gave everybody their time in the center, moved Derek to the side, moved Hottie to the side, and you know, kind of playing a little three-card money with the top three there to who's going to be trip, the winner. Man. I, I like when they do that, because it gives some high hopes, and it gives some hopes that just you're not going to win, but it's like it gives them high hopes for that, that minute second they feel like they're the champ, and so, they may have to stay there. How do you know which guy, though? I mean, Tarek, Chris, how do you know how do you do it? when they go, all right, and you hear Big Steve and Tarek, go. And Tarek, do you do that when you're head judge Absolutely. at some of the smaller shows? Absolutely. Listen, uh, you want to give the top competitors a equal opportunity, and you also want to make sure the judges see those competitors from all angles. So you got three competitors, right? Let me make this, you know, you got Derek. You got Hadi and you got uh, Samson. Or if, Nick. You, if you switch all of them, all their positions, the judging panel has had an angle to every competitor. Does that make sense? All of us looked at all three competitors on the right, all three competitors in the center, and all three competitors on the left. In addition to that, nothing is decided. We're still judging. So it's paradoxical to keep one guy in the middle. A lot of people think, well, you know, he's the winner if he's in the center. Not at all. Samson Dauda was in the center at some point, and he ended up in third place. So we do it because we believe top competitors should pose. They should be in the, all the angles, and the judging panel, they deserve to see the competitors from all angles. That's funny that the way that you two both put that. Uh, you're doing it for the judges and for the fans, and you're saying, unfortunately, and I'm that guy in the middle at some point that's going, I'm in the middle. I'm right here. Uh, uh, They're uh, over uh, there. Uh, you lose and you lose because uh, I'm, I'm right here. It, right. <laughs> but I'm not thinking, oh, they're just doing it to be fair. But you know, there's different looks and there's different uh, variations of the physiques in the different spots of the stage. And sometimes someone looks better on the left side, better, and then on the right side, they look totally different, maybe less, maybe more. And I've seen that in my own eyes. And I, I mean, I love it, but it's, it's, it's bodybuilding. It's, highest highest degree of i mean it's it's, it's inches and it's a little bit sometimes going to be you didn't hit the shot correctly which can happen to anyone when they're tired or when the when the lights are up and the heat is on sometimes you're not gonna hit your shot exactly right the other guy may hit it better and then they may, may, move, may move in front of you at that point well guys let's let's talk about samson specifically go through some of his positives and as we do i just want to say when you move a samson to the middle and you've got two five foot six inch bodybuilders, it's hard for the casual to mid-level fan not to think that guy's a lot bigger than those guys. 
because he's just massive in height and width, and he's, he seems like he's as big, but the same big, but taller. Yeah, and listen, I don't blame the, um, the, the young uh, audience member, the young fan of bodybuilding to have that assumption. Oh man, he's taller, he's bigger. But bodybuilding is a lot more than that. There's conditioning, which has no implication on the height. There's muscularity, which has no implication on the height. There's lines, which has no implication on the height. I'm gonna tell you, one of the most overrated things is, you know, height in bodybuilding. Oh, he's so tall, you know. Andrew Jack is not Mr. Olympia. Derek Lunsford is Mr. Olympia. One is 5'7", the other one is 6'4", if but I'm that not comes mistaken. from the, the classic division. They think that it's a taller man's division. And I'm like, this is bodybuilding. It's just the best physique up there to me. Well, you look at Terrence Ruffin and Breon. Uh, Urz is not terribly tall. Uh, and and if, you, if you look at the, even the men's, uh, the men's physique, it's not about the, the, how tall the person it, is. It is the most overrated thing in bodybuilding is when people Where does that talk come from? about height. Jeremy Buendia won four men's physique Olympia titles. He was not the Five, tallest six. guy. Classic physique. Danny Hester, Brian Angeli, they were not five, the tallest five, ones. Six. And is Chris Bumstead the tallest? No, he's not the tallest. Wesley Vissers is taller than him. Oh, let's talk about bodybuilding. Andrew Jack is the tallest guy on the lineup. You know, Derek Lunser and Hardy are two of the smallest guys in terms of height, and they're winning the Olympia. Height is one of the most overrated things I've ever heard in bodybuilding. I'm okay? glad you said it. So, Samson... There's a few things that he needs to do, one of which we harp on constantly for everybody, but is he at a, a genetic disadvantage for conditioning with a thicker skin, Chris? And historically, I'm going to come to you on this, I'll come to you both on this one. Who can we remember historically that had that thickened skin that overcame it and rose the ranks? I would say Nasser El Sabate. Okay. Nasser didn't have the thinnest skin, but he still rose up to the top two in the world and rolls up there really fast and you know took him about three years uh he was working with milos at the time but he came from placing behind me till second in the olympia uh within two years wow so i think he he didn't have the, the thinnest skin but just having the mass and the cuts and the the you know he started to get a, um, he's not he didn't have the best separation in lines but just powerful powerful dense muscle Lee Haney was not as conditioned as Rich Gasparri. Rich Gasparri was the guy that started the whole striated glutes. Lee Haney never had striated glutes and he won the Olympia eight times. However, I do think Samson Dowda needs to tighten up a little bit more, a little bit more. You know, does he have to be Andreas Munzer shredded? No, he does not. He just needs to be a little bit tighter, you know? Uh, I like to mention this because this is important for people that are watching. You don't just beat somebody on a criteria. It's not like, oh, Hadi Chupan beat Samson Dowda on, on conditioning. conditioning. Right. It's not that simple. It's by how much have you beaten that competitor by condition. Is it a lot? Is it a little? Is it enough? Is it enough? So if Samson Dowda can diminish, diminish the distance between him and Hardy in terms of conditioning, he becomes very close to winning the whole show. It's like we were talking about Derek Lunsford's back double biceps. Possibly nobody in this lineup will have his back double biceps. But if Hardy is conditioned, if Samson is conditioned, now Nick Walker comes into play, he has a great, now we're looking at Derek's back double biceps, we go, okay, he wins this pose, but it's not by that much. Okay, I got a question for you uh, before we move on. Uh, back around June 1st, late May, June 1st, both Nick and Samson were guest posing. They both looked massive. Uh, Nick was just coming off of uh, New York Pro, though, so his conditioning was great. I think they both had a, a, Samson had a little bit of a top to bottom balance issue. Is he still overpowering his bottom with his top? Slightly still, slightly still. I know he improved his back some, but he's gonna need to improve those delts and those the upper pecs. Uh, when he hits some of those shots, some of the muscles look like they they don't really open up; they kind of contract down into each other. So when he hits some of those most muscles and stuff like that, 
Uh, and, you know, and there's another one we got to say, you must control the stomach. When you're hitting some of those three-quarter shots to the front, you know, coming up like this, you can't have a, a little bubble like I do by your, uh, <laughs> by your belly button right here. You can't have like a little bubble right there. And that's something, if you can have that flat and trim down, that makes that whole pose stand out and jump out. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, I'm going to make this simple for you guys. If your gut is as big as Chris Cormier and Tarek El Gindi, <laughs> you should not be on stage, okay? <laughs> you should not be on stage. So look at Chris Cormier and Don't I. Don't lump me together okay? with you. I'm stand a up, Chris. Stand up. God. Okay? If you have a little bit of a pudginess here, you should not be on stage. Look at Chris. Can't see we got black. a little bit of a pudginess here. You can't be on stage. You got to have a tight waist like Tim Wilkins. Stand up, Tim. Yeah, Tim. So open that. Shut. Open that. Open oh, that. Look at that. Look at that. Sean, uh, Look at this. Flat, this, flat this, board. this is a tight waist, wasp okay? Waist. Uh -huh. This is the kind of wasp waist you should waist. have on stage. Wasp we waist. made it very clear to you. All I'm missing is quads and upper chest. <laughs> um, and about 100 pounds. Can't have it all, Tim. So, Samson, there are a few things uh, you can do and, and just keep pounding the rock, man. You are. You're at the top of the food chain now. It's going to be a very interesting to see what he can do between now and November. Man, just it's tighten coming. up. Let's tighten go. up a little bit, Cause then, Samson uh, cause, cause, then, Cause then Samson's attributes are going to help him overcome so much with just, to lead, just a little bit more of the, uh, the conditioning. Well, there's that. And then there's a couple more people that are going to be uh, maybe some X factors for yes, the Olympia this year. Some other people. One of our favorites, I'm going to say it. Rafael Brandon. Oh! Ah! <laughs> when we come back on Primetime Muscle. And a guy that we've talked about uh, a few months back, uh, Rafael Brandon. Rafael. Rafael Brandon. I've, I've been working Rafael. on Rafael. 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 I'm half white. Wow, that was so good, Chris. Rafael. That was so good. Yes. I'm impressed. I've been working on it. I've been no, working on my you, Portuguese. You really, you, you can't hit the, the rolling R like Tim Wilkins, <laughs> but you can hit the soft R. Rafael. 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 And then you say his name. Brandon. 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 Nice. Well, C now C that boom. we've uh Seaboom. Seaboom. <laughs> the Brazilians C call boom. the Brazilians calls uh Seabum Seaboom. 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 <laughs> the first time they said that to me, I said, Who the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is Seaboom? Seaboom. <laughs> I told I told Chris and he goes, I like it. I'm gonna change it to Seaboom. Seaboom. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Rafael or Rafael, depending on who's watching right now, uh just huge changes over the last couple of years. Uh, two seasons ago, we talked about him uh, being one of those hybrids of, yes. of great lines and great aesthetics, and if he could just mass up a little bit, he'd really start to get his place in the world. Well, he did. Yes. Tim, there are times where your physique benefits by what's happening in bodybuilding. So in the 90s, if Rafael Brandão was com competing in the 90s, he wouldn't be as successful as right now. Because in the 90s, there were beautiful lines. There were Chris Cormier, Flex Wheeler, Sean Ray, all these guys. So Rafael would be just another guy, Milo Sarchev. We don't have that many guys with beautiful lines, okay? We have Rafael Brandão. He has better lines than Derek Lunsford has better lines than Heidi Chupin. He has better lines than even Samson, who has beautiful lines. He has better lines than Nick Walker. So all of a sudden, if he falls into a first call out and his conditioning is impeccable, and you look at him next to Heidi, Derek, and Nick, you're gonna say, hold on. This guy looks prettier than them. His conditioning is impeccable. Yeah, he's not as big as Nick Walker, but then again, who is? 
and you start kind of playing in your head like this guy could really be a contender. His Arnold Classic performance, and Chris Cormier said to me, Tarek, my opinion, he could have been second there. He won a lot of poses. If he brings that physique to the Olympia, we might be up for a surprise. Yes, uh, Rafael has the type of physique that can move him around in the lineup. As far as some of the shots, he's going to be dominant. Some of the shots, he might be overwhelmed by the, uh, some of the other competitors. Uh, you know, and Tarek said, his physique, you know, nowadays, it's, 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 it's got the pretty lines, and he can expose a couple of competitors, and, you know, he's still working on the, the very shot, I mean, the very look as far as conditioning, how much size compared to keeping the lines and keeping all the cuts. And that's where, you know, I mean, look at the face or expression. This guy means business. You see that face? He means business. He ain't playing. So, uh, guys, we're looking at people that are qualified. <laughs> of course, you know last year's top three automatically qualified. And then you get into uh, uh, Tony Burton, Martin Fitzwater. Um, you've got uh, recently oh, Nick Walker. So now there's those. We're still missing guys like... Uh, uh, well, we, uh, LeBron, Hunter Labrada. You know, Hunter Labrada. Put on more mass this year. A lot more mass. Well, look, there's plenty of names that are going to have to be at the Olympia stage. The key question is, is Rafael better than Hunter Labrada? Last time Rafael competed, he was in 10th at the Olympia. But Hunter Labrada has never placed third at the Arnold. The question is, has Rafael surpassed some of these guys we're talking about? Has he surpassed Andrew Jack? Has he surpassed some of these guys? Because based on his result after the Arnold, which he was just behind Hadi Chupin and Sampson, he is, and a lot of people think he's going to be on the first call out. If he's on the first call out, then he has surpassed Hunter Labrada. We're talking about a guy that's potentially top five in the world. And he's a young guy. And I, I don't know, but this, this Mr. Olympia is going to be curious because I think there's going to be some real happy people and there's going to be very unhappy people once Steve Weinberger calls that first That's call That's every out. show, every show. But I think, I think your but point about this year is going to be deeper oh, to 10 and 12. Deeper, man. It's going to be deeper. And, you know, we said that other times and people didn't come in, you know, in shape. But I think this year is going to be different. I think more people are going to be in shape than they has been in a long time. And, you know, the whole six to eight and even up to ten place, it, it's going to be stacked. And what I mean by stacked is, like, you know, you got genetics, you got potential, you got potential genetics, you got, you got people that can, <laughs> can fill out the physique. I mean, you got the likes of people coming in, into the party late. Uh, Nexilla may even be in there mixing it up with these guys. I would love to see, uh, you know, maybe some of the guys that didn't have a visa that, that qualified from previous years, maybe they would be in, in the fold. So all these, all these guys, if, if the guys are with us and, and we all make it to the show, that's going to be one Who hell of a show. Who was it that was having so much trouble? Was it Baruch Tabani? Baruch yeah. Tabani could not get a visa to get into the United States. That's a fantastic competitor who plays second at the Romania Muscle Fest. I was the head judge. Again, more conditioned than Samson Dauda on that show, but Samson won that show. I want to go back to Rafael. There's a quality about Rafael Brindon, which is very, very important. Ramon looks a little bit laid back on stage, right? Rafael is not like that. Rafael is not laid back at all. He wants to fight. Action. If you put him on the first call out, he's going to go after Derek Lumsford and Hadi Chupin and whoever is there. So funny you should say that because we had dinner with him uh, a few months back and uh, he even eats in tents. Yeah. When him and Horse, uh, and, uh, Horse MD, we, we had dinner and they are, they're just intense. Do not, do not mistake Rafael Brandon, pretty physique, beautiful lines, good looking guy. He is a freaking killer. On stage, if he gets on that first call out, 
He will not be intimidated by Derek Lunsford and Hadi Chupin. On the contrary, he's going to attack them. Mentally, Rafael Brandon considers himself the best bodybuilder. He's not here to take second to anybody. And a lot of people in Brazil say if Ramon had the same mindset, Ramon would have beaten Chris Bumstead. It's just that Ramon is way too laid back. Okay. Yes, I, I can agree with that. I feel like, uh, you know, Rafael, he's at the brink of taking that step forward. You know, a lot of times I've, you know, placed in sixth or seventh or whatever in Olympia. It comes a time when you want to man up and you want to go for it. And I think this guy is at the point in his career where he wants to man up and he wants to go for it and see where he lands and see where he stacks up. So whatever gains you've made this year, make sure they're conditioned and then maybe take a year off. Those legs and the back, thickness and thickness and thickness. Yes, and I wanted to see the difference in the back. Uh, he kind of gave up that back double to Antonio uh, in, the, uh, in the show in Brazil. But I want to see some improvement in the back. I want to see some more improvement in the legs and the upper quads. I want to see those Sartorius muscles popping. I want to see the Sartorius muscles popping. Javier, popping. Okay? That's what we want to see. That's what's going to move you up in the standings. And you got to get that back double bicep punishing people. You got to punish it. It will be different. This Mr. Olympia will have surprises. I believe Rafael could be on the first call out and we, sh we could see some names that we're used to seeing on the first call out out of the first call out. In the call out, not on. On is like on top. In it's going like to be on stage, jackass. Well, I just thought I'd mention that because you were wrong. So uh, prepositions aside, it is going to be interesting when, uh, <laughs> when he uh, qualifies, uh, where he ends up, what improvements he's made year over year. And of course, like a lot of these guys, with the improvements, how conditioned will they be? Mass for the sake of mass is not going to help you, fellas. Uh, when we come back, we're going to find out where one particular superstar has been and, and what his plans might be for the year on Primetime Muscle. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. All right, one of the biggest names in the last uh, 40 years, 50 years of the sport is Sergio Oliva. Sergio Oliva Jr. Uh, making a huge uh, run at this sport over the last few years. And then we kind of kind of lost track of him off and on for the last year or so. Uh, guys, a little I, hiatus. Little hiatus. A little hiatus, if you will. Uh, one of my absolute favorites, you know you are. Uh, I saw him at the, was it Intergrammatica or the Black Skull? Uh, Black Skull. Black oh boy, Skull. you don't want to confuse those Black two. Skull. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, thank you. Fix that for me. Black he, Skull. He was at the Black Skull um, booth at the Olympia. Um, so here's the thing about Sergio Oliva. Turned pro at the Nationals. Huge legs. Does not have his father's genetics. His dad didn't have his legs. And he doesn't have the small waist that senior had. Sergio needs to come up, win two shows, go to the Olympia and get a first call out. Bottom line, okay? That's what we expect from Sergio Oliva. That's his level of talent. And one time we did a live with him and he was very categorically about, hey, there's, there hasn't been any dominant bodybuilders right now. We're not living in the Phil Heath era. We're not living in the Ronnie Coleman era, which he's right, we're not. You know, we're alternating a lot of champions. So he goes, I see an opportunity for me to come up and, and start fighting. But we have not seen Sergio as much as we would like. I know he had some issues in Dubai, which he has resolved. I talked to him in India, and he seemed to be centered. Uh, he's connected right now with Coach New Hill. So I do believe that Sergio Oliva can make a run. The key question is, what's happening in Sergio's mind? What's happening in his spirit? Is he ready to go or not? He is. I actually reached out to him a couple days ago, and uh, he's had a couple injuries. They are healed up. He's in the States, and he's ready to get down to business, prep, qualify, compete. 
Yes, uh, Sergio, I saw him in... Marbella. Marbella, but uh, I saw him at the FIBO. Mm -hmm. He was at the, uh, at some booths there, Black Skull and everything. Saw him in Marbella, Spain. Uh, he, uh, you know, he suffered some injury, so he had an, a bad ankle for a while and shoulder. And uh, that, you know, I thought he was planning on doing the New York Pro, but, you know, with injuries, he decided to uh, cut bait, if you will, on that, on, on the uh, idea of doing the New York Pro. Then I thought maybe he would pick up, you know, pick up steam and go for another one. But then he started to, you know, try, he needed to recover from the injuries. Uh, had some issues with the uh, visa running out and had to come back to the States. So now, being back in the States, now he's, uh, uh, you know, going to fix it all again, mentally, physically. Uh, hopefully he can put it all together and get going to, you know, carry on his career. You know, we thought we had a promising career out of this guy coming. Uh, the father of the son. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the father of the son being held on Olympia stage as a baby. Uh, you know, that's his home, the Olympia. Lion King. And so he has to, you know, has to, like Terry said, you got to win a show. He's got to get in the mix at the Olympia and, and get his rightful place. Uh, in the bodybuilding world and stay there. Tarek, uh, I'm a fan of his in a lot of ways. We did the movie Bigger together, spent some quality time getting to know each other. I love his physique. I think he holds a lot of really, really deep quality mass. I think he holds it well and in a, an aesthetically pleasing way. It's just a matter of just a couple fine tunes and get on stage, see what you're made of. Some back thickness. And Let's some talk about his emotional state. Because Sergio Oliva Jr. is a very emotional person. Anybody that knows him knows his emotions are, are very much alive. He, Instagram. He, he can't hide his emotions. <laughs> and that's not bad. A lot of people relate with that, you know, because they're emotional and they relate with somebody that's emotional. But he has to control his emotions and channel his emotions to a place where he goes, I'm going to channel my emotions to compete and to succeed. Um, and I feel like with maturity, Sergio Oliva Jr. is going to become a better competitor. Because guys, let's get real here. For you to prepare for a bodybuilding competition, it's not easy. You're depleting your body from food, which is unnatural, right? If you have access to food and you don't eat, that's unnatural. That's not human beings or animals work. You want to always have food in your system. Bodybuilding puts you in a position, and that's just why it's such a captivating sport, because it teaches you something that no other sport can do. You can play in the Super Bowl, and you ate a pasta before. You can do NBA Finals and have, you know, tons of water before, right? Bodybuilding puts you in a position where it really challenges your mind and your body. Sergio Oliva Jr., like you said, Tim, has the potential to be first call out at the Olympia. He needs to channel his emotions in a positive way and deal with adversities in a way that it doesn't distract him from his ultimate goal. Yes, and I know if, you, if you're talking different body parts, I know he'd like a little bit more peak um, on his biceps, but he does have massive shoulders, massive, massive arms, massive in some shots, uh, you know, got that Rottweiler thickness you know, to his body. Uh, he trained a lot with Dorian Yates over there in Marbella. So, uh, you know, we, we trained back in the day uh, before then. I know he's a hard worker. He, he, can, he can go. He can go in the posing room. He can go in the, uh, you know, great poser. Uh, he can go in the gym. Uh, you know, like Tarek said, channeling all of the emotion and putting it in a bottle and drinking that as a pre-workout. That's what you need to do. And I think that's where, you know, he could put it all together mentally and physically. And that's where you're going to need to do to, to shine and to get to the next level where he needs to be. Well, it's funny you should say that, uh, Tarek, about the kind of mental uh, game that gets played. Uh, you know how hard it is as an NPC competitor in, across all divisions to balance life and stay focused and food and, and train. And then as soon as you deplete, something's got to give in there, it gets a little harder. Now, here's a problem I see more with the pros, especially in this generation. When you have to shut out other parts of your life to only focus on this, 
and you're depleted and you're exhausted, your mind has a lot of free time to wander and doesn't have the fuel to make it wander to good places. So you've got to find some kind of a hobby, some kind of, a, find your faith, man. Find something. Find something bigger and better than you to concentrate on because when you start going wide right and wide left is when your mind kind of plays tricks. You know, um, Tim, I agree with you. Sometimes we, we often tell ourselves, keep yourself busy, right? If you're busy working, if you're busy producing, if you've got to be places, then a lot of times you're not getting yourself into trouble, right? Um, if you're a bodybuilder and you're dieting, you're preparing for a show, you can't really do crazy stuff. And I think if Sergio gets in a rhythm here and he, he does two bodybuilding shows in sequence, you know, the New York Pro and the Toronto Pro, he prepares for two shows, does really well on both of them, qualifies for the Olympia, and does really well at the Olympia. I think this guy's going to change. Tampa, Tampa Pro in Texas. He's going he's gonna to think, hold on here. I'm a great freaking bodybuilder. I know I've dealt with a lot of adversities, but I can do this still with the adversities. I can win shows. I can even be Mr. Olympia with all these adversities. So let's just move forward. I yes, I want to see him not have... Uh, the mindset where you're going to let anything step in the way. Run over, go through whatever you got to go through, but make it to the show. Do what you got to do. Take care of what you got to take care of, but make it to the show. Compete and start moving in that direction. Well, uh, Sergio, we look forward to seeing you back on stage and seeing all the potential that you've got come to fruition. Guys, there are a couple other people, uh, one or two that were missing from last year. Uh, Brett Wilkin, who uh, qualified for last year and then had... Uh, qualified for the, yeah, the, last the 23 year. 23 Olympia. Stomach. No, no, he qualified last year, but he couldn't do it. Yes. So stomach issues, was it? Something, something happened, like yeah. The previous year, he lost his qualification to Berusta Bani in Romania, but this year he qualified and couldn't make... You know, and, and I think he's close. gonna earn his qualification, yeah. Yeah, and another great physique. He's made great improvements. He and uh, Martin Fitzwater training together. Yeah, I call them the Iron Brothers. Every generation has guys that work out real hard, and Fitzwater and Brett Wilkin are those guys. Uh, other guys, uh, Chris, uh, Nathan Diasha, uh, some Cam Cormier guys. You talk yeah. about Rubiel. Uh, Rubiel has got to get a visa and get on stage and but qualify. Gonna, yeah, but competing in the Dubai show, that's the, uh, you know, he's, he's already there in the Middle East, been there for at least a month or so. Who else is missing uh, um, that, that we need to get on stage at the Olympia this year? Uh, Mohammed uh, Shaban. Oh. Oh, the other one. What's the one from Canada? Uh, Mustafa. Mustafa Mohammed. Mustafa, Mustafa Mohammed. We have Mohammed Foda. We have a lot Foda, of competitors. Man. Foda, here. man. You better watch out for that one. Yeah. That's, that guy's a real deal. You know, uh, Horace MD took third at the Romania Muscle Fest. How is he going to look this year? That is a good question. If Horace MD can get the conditioning from the backstage photo to the stage at the Brazil show, he was insanely conditioned. You mean the Romania show? No, was it Romania that he was backstage and took a couple pictures? Yeah, Romania. Yes, and it was like a Thursday, Friday, and then by Saturday, something was just a, just missed the peak by that much. It blurred a little bit, yeah. yeah. So he's, a, he's, he's got potential as well. So I, I have a feeling that, you know, this Olympia is going to have a lot of new stars, and maybe some of the old stars are not going to be there. Yeah, we have a great top 10 coming to Olympia this year. It's going to be stacked. It's going to be a fight for not the top five. It's going to be a, just a fight for the top 10. Uh, you tell us who your top five and top 10 are. We would love to hear that in the comments. Uh, as always, talk about Samson, Raphael, and uh, like and share this with your friends. Subscribe and make sure they know this is out here. Guys. Another one down. Another one down, and it's just ticking away. <laughs> it's like getting ready for our own show, getting ready for the Olympia. I'll go, we're this many weeks out, oh. man. we got to do more cardio and cut our carbs. Olympia. I need, get, I need to get my upper chest up before this Olympia, I think. Yeah. A little, little bit more upper chest, a little bit more hamstrings. Yeah. I'll set my glutes. So when you're interviewing, you can sit on that glute and just, yeah, just <laughs> yeah. get Don't that Don't worry, pop. Chris. <laughs> we can do some Photoshop on you, <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> including you. your face. Thank you. Thank All you. right, guys. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Tarek El Gindi. Great to be here with you and Chris. And Chris. Check it All out. Right, my man. The real deal, the legendary real Chris deal. Cormier. Good nice. to see you, buddy. We'll see you next time on Primetime Muscle. <laughs>